the thing we're talking about today, the draft of the teams that will make the playoffs that didn't make it last year. The party crashes to the playoffs, and we know the turnover is great every single year. So that's where we are today. I have the trivia question for Chris. Chris, here we go. The Buccaneers have the second longest active playoff drought in the NFL, 12 seasons. The Browns currently have the longest with 17. Name the starting quarterback of the last Tampa Bay Buccaneers playoff game, which came in the 2007 wild card round. Oh, wow. Geez, this is, an, I mean, this is what color is blue. I mean, there's a, with Jeff Garcia, of course. I was on the damn team. So I, I'm not that crazy. Uh, I'm, hey, 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 Pete, what are you doing? Pete forgot. Pete forgot you were still on the team. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, that's uh, uh, Pete's. You know, that's yeah, Pete's a great friend. He knows a lot about my life, as you can tell. I mean, yeah, <laughs> thanks, Pete. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I was still on the team. Yeah. I was barely a year after dying, so yeah, I was. I was there still. Sorry. Uh, yep. Yep. I yeah. was. So, I get the first pick on the draft, right? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you get another gift. You get a, you get a birthday gift two days later. Yeah, good. I don't really want to take the Bucks, but I know you're going to take them, so I'm taking the Bucks from you. Okay, here we go. I'm going with Bucks as a playoff party crasher. I really am. I mean, listen, there, there's too many things on the roster not to like regardless. You know, am I skeptical in some ways and some things? I definitely am. But with Brady and Gronk and good tight ends to go along with it and the wide receivers they have, a special front seven, yeah, they're certainly one of the teams I look at to be, you know, the 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 new team in the playoffs that didn't make it from last year. Uh, it's a very talented roster, and I think the Brady effect, like what you talked about, you know, it is real. How he got that team together in the off season, getting everybody on the page, everybody's holding themselves probably a little bit more accountable than the years past down there because Brady's on their butt all the time and all those things too. So uh, I will take Tampa Bay. Yeah, I don't know that that would have been my first pick. No, I, you're I think full you of left it. You a just, better one. You're full I, of it. You are so full of it. I think you left it. a better one on the board. I think from the standpoint of making the playoffs, right? I, I, I think you just the said they're going to win the suit. They could win the Super Bowl. You didn't say the Colts I could know. win the Super Bowl. So stop True. trying and, to just and, to crap on my picks, just to crap on my picks. All right. And I did say the worst case for the Buccaneers is make the playoffs. Yes. Uh, the worst case for the Colts, I did not say was make the playoffs. I'll right. agree with you. There. Okay. Thank but you. still, I'm taking the Colts. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. There, there are a couple of teams in the AFC that I think I would select, but the one that jumps out to me, a team that was seven and nine last year despite having Andrew Luck retire a couple of weeks before the start of the season and then having a good start. I think they were 5-2 and two at one point, I Chris. Believe so. I and be, then yep. Jacoby Brissett got injured, and it all fell apart for right. them after that. And uh, they, they were a team that could have made it, should have made it, and would have made it last year if Brissett had stayed healthy all season long. He was never the same once he came back from that MCL injury. So with Phillip Rivers... Assuming we're not going to see on a weekly basis the guy who was throwing up interceptions in primetime games last year, seven in back-to-back -back primetime games, I think the Colts do enough to get in, especially with that seventh spot available. Give me the Colts as my first pick. Yeah, I, I'm with you. It's, I, I'm, I'm going to – I honestly – I feel like there's things I like about their team and their roster and their chances maybe more than the Bucks in a lot of ways. Uh, but – it's a pretty damn good football team. It's got So you're saying you should have picked the Colts. Well, I, I said I just wanted to pick the Bucks for sure just to mess up your draft. All right. I just felt good about that on a Monday, uh, late in August. So they just felt right. All right, I'm going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's my next team. I mean, it's a Super Bowl caliber defense. That's the first thing I'll say. I mean, it's one of the best in the game. They were winning games by themselves almost last year. And then I think, you know, Big Ben being back, the addition of Chase Claypool. All of those things, I think that, of course, is going to help this offense immensely. And then Eric Ebron being there at the tight end position, along with Vance McDonald. Uh, I, I look at Pittsburgh as being one of those teams to jump back on the scene in a big way this year. Uh, they, they were too good, too talented last year, just had issues at quarterback, couldn't make any plays in the pass game. That won't be a problem this year. The reason I passed over them for the Colts, I'm yeah. more concerned about the durability of Ben Roethlisberger than I am the durability of Phillip Rivers, I even though that. we should be concerned about both. I still wonder whether or not the elbow thing last year was a sign of things to come. And this year it's going to be something else. And next year it's going to be something else. Right. And his body is in the process of breaking down because of the abuse it's taken, the physical pounding it's taken over the years. Uh, being a guy who has always had someone hanging all over him and, you know, you carry around – uh, a lot of weight, and he's a big guy on those joints. It may be time for a rebellion of basically every joint from his hips to his knees to his ankles. All right, uh, next one for me. 
And I'm a little hesitant here to say Cowboys, but they were 8-8 eight and eight last year, and they almost so good at underachieving. They'll find another way to do it. But seven spots. out this year and they're kind of on that vikings every other year vibe anyway right so this is a year the vikings don't make it so the cowboys take their spot instead uh it's not going to take much of an improvement to get in position to get one of the seven spots in the nfc and with mike mccarthy there that kick in the butt and cd lamb uh, dak prescott in another contract year ezekiel elliott with a chip on his shoulder that that rotation of pass rushers they're grooming I think it's enough to get the Cowboys in. Yeah, I, I, I think that would have been my next pick, Mike. Certainly, just you know, too many talented guys on the roster. Yeah, you're right. The kick in the butt by Mike McCarthy. You know, Mike Nolan on the defensive side. I think that's worth you know that energy, and and everything like that is worth a win or two to to improve that football team at the very least. So I'm with you there. Oh man, this is where it's tough. This is really tough. I mean, I got like four teams. I feel like I could pick for. For this, you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb because I want to, and I'm rooting for it to happen, and I'm rooting for the city. And everything. I'm going the Cleveland Browns. I am. I'm going with it. I don't care. I just, I, I mean, damn. Hopefully they learn from last year. Kevin Stefanski seems very even keel. Has a plan. Knows how he wants to approach the year. Joe Woods as a defensive coordinator, and then a lot like the Cowboys, it's just the, the roster is so damn good. You know, you just you look at the front four, you look at the receivers, the offensive lines improved now. You know, they're running backs, some young secondary guys that I that you like. Okay, a little unproven there, but uh I, I I'm I'm going with the Browns. I am. I mean, I thought about the Chargers, they're in that conversation, the Rams, the Falcons, uh, but I don't know. I just want I want to you see know, the I still Browns have a pick. and all that. I know, I don't care. You know the teams that are available. Go ahead. All right, I, I'm going to go with the Falcons then. Yeah. If you're going to leave the Falcons, I'm, I'm going with the Falcons. Finished 6-2 and two the second half of last year. And again, that, that extra spot is Crazy. all the difference in the world. And, and we're so caught up in Saints and Bucks and Saints and Bucks and Saints and Bucks. I could see the Falcons kind of sneak in and, and maybe swipe one of those spots. And a point that I think Peter King made, the, the idea that uh, if you get us, you could, you could get a very compelling two and seven matchup between teams from the same division. Yeah, you could. Uh, which, which you, you go from previously having a bye as the team with that two seed to now having to welcome to town a team that you play twice a year every year that is not intimidated by you at all and would not, love nothing more than to kick your ass out of the playoffs before the playoffs even truly get started. Uh, the, the Falcons, if they get that seventh seed and it's the Buccaneers or the Saints, that could be a very, very dangerous game right out of the gates. But I think the Falcons, good enough to get there. You know, health is going to be an issue for all these teams. But uh, if they can continue that momentum that we saw last year, this is a team that I think should breeze into the postseason, Chris. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I, I get you. I mean, the Falcons, it's, it's big time talent on that football team across the board. Yeah, it all comes down to the injury bug. Can they stay healthy? They're very top heavy. You know, two or three injuries early on in the year, the last two years, have basically ruined their season to where they just don't have guys that can fill in. So, you know, maybe a little bit more depth on the team this year, uh, but health is going to be the big issue for them. And, and if they can stay healthy, they're going to be dangerous. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.